Hi friends, welcome to Worship This Day. We're going to celebrate Palm Sunday together today. Uh, this day marks Jesus' triumphant arrival in the city of Jerusalem as he begins to uh, plan and carry out his mission, his ministry of Holy Week. And we're glad that you're here for worship with us this morning. We want to thank Ashley, who's going to do the editing to put this all together from many different places. And we want to thank Tom for getting it on the website. I want to ask if you uh, like my uh, coronavirus goatee that I have begun to grow. Uh, much to Becky's chagrin, I have pledged not to trim it until uh, we are together again in worship. And uh, I may look like a participant in the Duck Dynasty TV series by then. But nonetheless, I'm going to let it grow and uh, see just what happens as we mark these days together. So we want to invite you now to prepare your hearts for worship as we hear our opening song. join your hearts and minds together with mine as we pray together on this Palm Sunday. As crowds of people welcomed Jesus when he rode into Jerusalem, acclaiming him as their ruler, so we welcome you, Creator, Christ, and Spirit. Above all human powers and dominions, you lay rightful claim to our praise, our love, and our obedience. Therefore, we have come to worship you and to hear your word. We love you, God, and we pray that we, with all people, might do your will on earth. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew in the 21st chapter and begins at verse 1. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Untie them, and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet who said, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him 
And those that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How do you portray Jesus' entry into Jerusalem? Is there a work of art that might come to your mind? It, it is, after all, a strange event. It has Jesus, it has a donkey, it has weeping, it has a, a crowd shouting out, a city, a, a group of protagonists, high drama, and great expectation. Surely, those are all ingredients for some great work of art, and yet, it's a strange event. Jesus allowed himself to be portrayed as a Messiah, knowing that he was on his way to die. And yet, those around him don't see that. The crowd senses freedom, but the authorities sense danger. And knowing that he has stirred up this nest of anger and hatred and rejection, he rides on a donkey towards Jerusalem. Jesus challenges the authorities. But the scene is not one, I think, that can be easily represented in a painting. Maybe maybe the best that we can do is to remember one of those great political moments. Maybe Martin Luther King and the March on Washington with his I Have a Dream speech. Or Nelson Mandela and his concern to create a new South Africa. These, I think, capture the underdog challenging the powers that be. The sense of anticipation by the crowd, but also the danger. For the crowd can be with you all too easily, and then it can be dispersed. But you know, there's an extra element in all this for Jesus. It's his motivation, his love. Not the emotion of love or the use of love, which we throw around when we say things like, I love chocolate or I love watching football. We're talking about like. For Jesus, love is described in 1 John chapter 4 when we read, Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, love for Jesus was not a feeling, not an emotion. It was a way His way is so described by the Apostle Paul, and he does it so well when he writes, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It does not, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things and endures all things. So Jesus entering Jerusalem is on the path, not to some political glory, but to perfection of love. And that love is costly, because it is about to cost him everything. The problem for the crowd, and all too often I think for us, is that we aren't prepared to pay the price for following the way of Jesus. Which is why Palm Sunday still has such power, why it still echoes in the political spheres and shocks and concerns those in power. It is not a normal revolution, a revolution where the chief challenger is prepared to die, not in an apocalyptic massacre, but rather prepared to give his very life for the sake of others, out of love for his enemies. I pray that this week you might be so full of the love of Jesus that you too are willing to give in his love. Amen. Let us pause now to spend some time in prayer. I invite you to take a deep breath. (sighs) 
set aside all of the worries and cares and anxieties and to-do lists and just center ourselves in this space, in this time. And while we do that, let us remember who we are. Let us remember that God created each and every one of us in God's own image. And he calls us good. Let us take time now to remember whose we are. And that is we belong to God. We are God's people. And God is our God. God hears us and God knows us and God is with us every step of the way and we are grateful. We celebrate and we praise God like the people in the crowds in Jerusalem when Jesus came on the donkey. We are so excited. And we say to God like the people of Jerusalem so long ago, we are hungry for a hero. We crave some glimpse of greatness. We are starving for the spectacular. We are gathered here like those who watched the Passion Parade in Jerusalem, craning our necks to catch a glimpse of our Messiah. As we wait here for the Savior to come, let us not be disappointed when the Special One appears, even though we are certain to be surprised and give us courage to follow where the one on the donkey might lead us, and who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, friends, we shout Hosanna. May this blessed word remain with us in the week ahead. God, grant us all to follow faithfully where Christ leads us. And may you all know courage and certainty that God's love will lead you ever closer to the grace that is yours to share with the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen.